there and welcome. I'm so glad you have a time to be with us today and stay with me the next 30 minutes. We have a lot going on and things to share that are important for all of us and our families. And uh, we're gonna begin today with some very special people here from the Upcountry History Museum. And it happens to be something I think is very important for all of us and especially for our children. And I want to introduce Kelly Smith. And um, Kelly is the curator of collections. Mm -hmm. And next to her is Elizabeth Gunter. And Elizabeth is the director of programs and marketing. That's me. So two busy ladies with kind of big <laughs> titles. And you're already planning for the future. Absolutely, yes, we are not an idle museum. So we have a lot going on right now, but we are constantly working to plan to bring wonderful exhibits and programs to the upstate. All right, now let me add, for those people, you know, we have a lot of people who are moving here all the time. I mean, where is the Upcountry History Museum located? We are located on Heritage Green in downtown oh. Greenville. And for those that aren't familiar with Heritage Green, it's a wonderful cultural center in the middle of downtown. We're located right next to Hughes Main Library and the Bob Jones Museum and Gallery at Heritage Green. There's also the Greenville Little Theater, mm -hmm. the County Art Museum, and the Children's Museum all in one campus. So it's a fabulous place for our community to come and visit our museum as well as many other cultural organizations. That's wonderful. So it's all kind of encapsulated and it's easy all for together. everybody to find the different places. Yes. That, you know, yes. Very you don't easy. have to drive around from one place to the other. That's wonderful. Yes. Yeah. And we've got some exciting things going on in Greenville. We do. Yes. We yeah. do. It's yeah. a busy place. And I know you people are busy. Now I want to let's let's talk a little bit about the museum. And how long has it been in existence and what are you attempting to achieve? So our museum opened in 2007 as a museum, yeah. and it's a purpose-built history museum, and our goal is to connect people, history, and culture together through our exhibits. We have wonderful permanent installations which tell the history of the upcountry, starting with the Native Americans and moving through to the civil rights era uh, through interactive, hands-on, very dynamic exhibitions and displays. But we also have three changing exhibit galleries which allow us to bring uh, nationally touring exhibitions as well as in-house curated <laughs> exhibitions that Kelly works on. Uh, so we have a lot of space to tell a lot of stories stories in one uh, forum and hopefully invite the community in. One thing we want to do is not be an island onto ourselves. We yeah. really want the community to feel it's a home for them to come see and learn and share and talk and discuss and debate history and culture and uh, events that have impacted our community. And we really do with the rotating exhibits when possible to also include a local component. So we had exhibit searching for the 70s uh, this past summer and we were able to do how it's called the ripple effect how revitalizing a river or the river sort of changed the community and so tying in these local components to really highlight what's going on as part of sort of this sort of subtext of sort of a larger exhibit as it's coming and through. you you want to appeal to all age groups there are things there that children can enjoy. I Absolutely. mean, most people think, oh, go to a museum, that's so dull, you know, <laughs> and it isn't. It's not at all. There's lots of hands-on components in the museum's permanent exhibits and especially in the traveling exhibits that we bring into the museum. Our goal is really to create lifelong learners. And so while we have many visitors that are adults, we want to encourage families to come as a unit because a child who starts with a passion for history is going to have a lifelong love of history and of museums and they're going to see them as a place that they want to support as they grow older. Uh, for us, history is really a vital part of moving America forward. Well, I, you know, many people say, oh, and kids in school, oh, history so dull, <laughs> oh, so boring, but it's exciting. It, it really, when you realize what happened to real people that influences us today. What happened 100 years ago influences what we do today. 
Yeah, and I always encourage even students I've taught and other people that I meet that you're a part of this living fabric of history and that, you know, I encourage everyone to talk to their parents or grandparents if so we have an exhibit coming in on the atomic era of the Cold War. So talk to your parents or your grandparents, aunts, uncles, your neighbor to sort of get insight into what they were going through, that it's not something that was over there. It's very much something that happened in not only Greenville or the upstate, but in your own personal family, and that you're sort of part of this living fabric. Now, you're, uh, you appeal to all age groups and to families, and then you have school groups, don't you, that come we through? We do. We are very busy with field trips coming in. We've had a record-setting year for the museum in terms of school children coming to visit That's us. That's wonderful. And we do programs that tie directly into South Carolina social studies curriculum, but we do interdisciplinary programs as well. So while they connect to history, they also include language arts, and they include the sciences, and they include math. And we show how history really can connect all of those different disciplines together through really engaging stories about people who lived in our community and shaped our community. Now you're open, what, six days a week? Six days a week. We're open Tuesday through Sunday. Tuesday through Saturday, we're open from 10 to 5. And on Sunday, we're open from 1 to 5. Of course, on special holidays and over the summer, we do open yeah. on Monday as well so that yeah. when children are out of school, families can still come to the museum. Now what about, do you have to have like a membership or how, how does it work? It's really up to you. We do have memberships to the museum and to me, that's the best way for a family to experience the museum. Our family membership started $80, and that's unlimited visits for 12 months. So that's really the best way to make use yeah. of the museum if you're here locally. But you can also just come for the day. We have adults who uh, can come in for $6. Seniors and college students are $5. Children are $4. And if they're three and under, they're free. So it really <laughs> is a great deal to come to the museum. It's less than going to the movies. Yeah, I was going to say, that's less more than a movie. And you can spend as long as you want you in can. there. You can. It's a lot longer than a movie and a lot more fun. You learn something about your own family when you're at the museum. And you have special <laughs> things that appeal to children, don't you? We do. Yes, we've been working really hard to bring in exhibitions that are specifically family focused and help to introduce families and young children to history. Um, and one of the recent ones that we had was the Magic Tree House last summer was incredibly successful and just engaging. We just uh, had loaded out our Wizard of Oz exhibit, which was, again, very engaging. And this spring, we're going to be having an exhibit on the artwork of David Small, who's a children's book illustrator and children's book author. And it's very engaging and ties directly to history. So that's coming up? It is. Yeah, do you want to tell a little bit about that? Is the, the David Smalls? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is just sort of through his artwork, really exploring history from presidents and explorers and really engaging kids have said it's exciting and our founding fathers and presidents through um, our current president um, have really shaped and they're not just sort of behind in the Oval Office, that they have these great exciting lives and quirky tales, and so you can sort of explore that through children's literature, which is a fantastic medium, um, and David Smalls really sort of brings all that now, to do life. You have do you have special events throughout the, the year and uh, that focus on families? Or? We do, actually. Every month we have, um, usually it's the first uh, Saturday or the first Sunday of the month, we'll do a family fun day at the museum. It's still regular admission price, so it's no additional fee, but we bring out children's games, we do story times, we do art projects, all of which connect to history and connect to our exhibitions. So that's every single month there are family days for the uh, visitors to come see. We also have a new program that we started at the end of 2015 and we're very excited to be continuing it through 2016 and it's called Neighborhood Nights. Neighborhood Nights are the first Neighborhood third, Nights. Neighborhood Nights. It's the first Thursday of the month and the idea was we realized that some members of our community, our own neighborhood, could not come to the museum, whether it was because they worked during our regular hours or maybe they couldn't afford even our basic ticket price. So on neighborhood nights, we open the museum up for free from 5.30 to 8.30, and we welcome anyone in the community who wants to come and join us to come in and see the exhibit. So that senior citizens and, and children and little everybody. babies yeah. are there, yes.
Yeah, so that's a wonderful thing. So you've tried to make it mm -hmm. inclusive we have. and not and not so expensive that people feel like they couldn't come. Mm -hmm. So this this is free, and then usually it's less than the price of a movie. Absolutely, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and a lot of the families that come on neighborhood nights realize the benefit and how wonderful the museum is. Some of them end up buying a membership because it's a good deal and they know that they can come back throughout the year to see other exhibitions, to come for programs. If you're a member, those family fun days are just free for your family to come and enjoy. Um, and so are many of the other programs we offer. We have lunchbox learning programs where we have wonderful speakers like our own curator, <laughs> Kelly Smith, or uh, local history professors, local writers coming in to give lectures. Those are free for members or just regular admission price for other guests. So we have so much to offer. So you have, we had a, a, a phone number and a website, and I'll keep those here if you didn't get them. But if you want more information, it's, it's a, a well worth the time to investigate what is right here in our midst. And it's a real gem. And uh, if, if you have children, get involved. Yes. That's because. History, history is not dull. It, it, we, no, it's very exciting. <laughs> it is exciting to know where we've been preparing for where we're going to go. And I, I, I thank you so much for coming and sharing with us today. And um, I'll keep this here. If you didn't get the information, I'll keep it. But we're, uh, we're very proud of our Upcountry History Museum and invite everyone to participate. Thank you both so much. We'll be right back.